Hello and welcome to this first exercise uh, doing a test of independence. So what we're going to be looking at here uh, is to determine whether or not I have evidence to show that there is a dependency between our two variables. So in this exercise, we're looking at uh, an animal shelter. That they're interested in knowing if people's decision to adopt a pet or purchase from a breeder is independent of the particular type of pet. Knowing which pets are more likely to be adopted, of course, will help the uh, animal shelter manage their inventories of, of animals. So here we have our two variables. We have the type of pet. So there's our one variable with a type of animal. And we have this decision of whether or not to adopt or purchase. So we have our two variables. Our null hypotheses in this case is that they are independent. So both of the variables are independent. The alternative is that they are not independent. Oops. So relatively straightforward. Um, null, null and alternative hypotheses. Uh, are they separate or are they not? State a level of significance. Alpha can be 0.05. So here we've got our part A done. Compute expected frequencies and test statistics. So for those of you, if you watched um, the preceding videos for 12.1, A, B, and C, where we're looking at um, testing for equality across multiple population proportions, the calculations here for the expected frequencies are ex exactly the same. So this table is giving us our observed frequencies. This table is giving us our expected frequency. And in order to calculate those, it's exactly the same formula. It's the row totals multiplied by the column total divided by the total number of observations. So for this cell here, for example, that will be the total number of uh, people who have a cat times the total number of adoptions divided by the total number of observations. So I explained this formula in some depth in some of the preceding videos. So I'm going to assume that everybody's watched um, at least one or two of those other videos. So here, let's just go through these calculations. So what I need to do uh, for the first one is move the calculator out of the way. And so for the cat, this is going to be 97 times 173 divided by 339, so 49.5. So if the null hypothesis is true, this is going to be 49.5, right? These expected frequencies, it's always, if they're independent, then these give us those expected proportions uh, that, we would exp that we would see. Oh, oh my gosh. So now, if I can get this to work. So now for dogs, same calculation, slightly different number. So I have 127 times 173 divided by 339. So 64.8. And the next one, so this is other, this is now going to be 114 times 173 divided by 339. So 58, 58.2. Now when we go to purchase, the next line, so again I go back to the cats, and now we're using this row total, so 166 uh, is, becomes a relevant value there. So 97 times 166 divided by 339, so 47.5. And I'm just gonna skip ahead and fill in the rest here, 62.2 and 55. So again, it's just these individual totals, the relevant row, relevant column times, uh, sorry, divided by the overall total. Now we can, we can fill in the rest. All of our totals here should all add up to be exactly the same. If they don't, then that's a good check to see that if there's a problem or not. I just scroll down because the pen gets funny. 97. So uh, there might be some rounding error in there, but otherwise we should be okay. 
Okay, so we have our observed frequencies, we have our expected frequencies. Now we can calculate our test statistic, which is going to be this chi-squared value. We're going to look at the differences between our observed value, the expected value. We square it, divide it by the expected value, and add those together across all columns and rows. So it's exa exactly the same formula, in fact. Uh, that we used for the test for equality across proportions. Uh, so it's a lot of familiarity here uh, for this type of test. So I'm going to just scroll down a little bit. I just need a little bit of room. So the first one that we'll do, we'll look at the cats. So here's our observed, here's our predicted. And so we need to look at that difference. So 62 minus 49.5. There's the difference, we square it, and we divide it by the expected value, 49.5. So that gives me 3 point, uh, let's call it 3.16. So here I'm going to get 3.16. The next one, let's do cats uh, purchased. So that's going to be... 35 and 47.5. So 35 minus our expected value, 47.5 squared divided by 47.5. So 3.29. And we can go through, so we have to do this six times. So I'm going to skip ahead to save us some time. So the next one will be 0 0.52, 0 0.54, 0 0.89, and 0.92. So I should have six of those different values for each of these six cells. We don't have to worry about these totals. All we're looking at are those expected and those um, observed values. So now we have all of these different values. Now we apply the summation, so we need to add all of these together. So 3.16, oops, 3.16 plus 3.29 plus 0.52 plus 0.54, 89, and 0.92, and I have a test statistic of 9. Point, oops. 9.32. So that is our chi-squared, 9.32. Now we've got this one done. Let's do part C, p-value and conclusion. So we need to know, of course, what kind of a distribution are we working with. So if we were to look up the critical value, which we'll do that too, this will be uh, alpha and our degrees of freedom different textbooks will use different notation, but be n minus 1 times m minus 1. So it's the number of columns minus 1 times the number of rows minus 1. So for us, we're doing this at the 05 level of significance, and we have uh, two, column, uh, two rows, three columns, so 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, so 1 times 2, I have just 2 degrees of freedom. Okay, so if we go to our, our chi-squared tables, 2 degrees of freedom, alpha is 05, there's our critical value, 5.991, 5.991. And we reject if our test statistic is greater than that critical value, which for us it is. 9.32 is greater than 5.991. So based on the critical value approach, we can reject. If we want the p-value, which I guess the problem actually did ask for the p-value approach, well, our test statistic of 9.3, that's way up here somewhere. 
was a 9.3 let me double check because we're pretty close yeah 9.32 so I'm right up in here so my p-value is somewhere between 0 0.01 and 0 0.005 so our p-value something less than 0 0.01 greater than 0 0.005 so based on that of course we should always get the same conclusion with either approach so we can reject our null hypotheses we can reject we do have evidence to show that they are not independent so there is a dependency between the type of pet and the method of acquisition whether I adopt it or I purchase so we do have evidence to show that these two variables are dependent on each other they are not independent variables and that's all there is to it. Uh, that's the extent of what we can do here. So that's it. Hopefully we've got uh, yeah, we've got through everything A, B, C, and D. So I hope that that was helpful. These calculations are almost entirely the same as what we did for the test for equality across proportions. The test statistic is the same. Calculating all of those expected values are the same. Uh, so hopefully you'll get lots of practice calculating these. Um, these different chi-squared test statistics. Okay, uh, of course the test is the test itself differs. The degrees of freedom differs a little bit. Here it happened to be the same only because I have uh, one, uh, two rows and three columns. So our critical value in this case turned out to be the same as it was before. But that's just because I'm keeping our problems as simple and straightforward as as possible. So, okay, enough uh, babbling on. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. We'll do a couple more, I think. Okay, bye-bye.